Ms. Manis. <clears throat> yes. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Marie Manis. I am the Rhode Island Campaign Manager for Compassion and Choices, the oldest nonprofit in the nation working to improve care and expand options at the end of life. Compassion and Choices advocates for legislation to improve the quality of end of life care for terminally ill patients and affirms their right to determine their own medical treatment options as they near the end of life. Today, we would like to affirm our support for House Bill 7297. All residents of Rhode Island, together with their families and medical team, should have the option to make the end-of-life care decisions that are personally right for them in the final stages of their terminal illness, including the option of medical aid in dying. The bill you are considering is modeled after the Oregon Death with Dignity Law, which has been successfully implemented for nearly 20 years. Medical aid in dying laws work as intended. They have been tested and proven safe and compassionate. Opponents may try to use scare tactics, painting a dark, false picture of abusive family members, coercing their terminally ill loved ones into requesting the medication and taking it against their will. They claim that the law would target the disabled, the elderly, frail, uninsured, and other vulnerable groups. However, in the more than 30 combined years of experience with medical aid in dying in authorized states, there has not been a single instance of documented coercion or abuse. These dire predictions simply do not happen. The legislation includes strict eligibility criteria and core safeguards necessary to ensure that patients are protected. There's a strong public and doctor support for medical aid in dying. Independent studies show that dying patients experience significant relief from worry about future physical and emotional pain just from knowing that this option is available we're, if they right need it. We're right around. Okay. Uh, oh. re regardless of whether or not they take the medication, the rest is in my written testimony. Thank you. Any questions of this witness? Thank you. Yes, Rep. Donovan. Oh, thank you, Ms. Menace, for your testimony. You. So in your opinion, this has worked in the states where um, it's, pa it's been passed? A absolutely. Um, you know, there, are, there have been uh, research studies in Oregon done where medical aid and dying laws encourage dialogue between patients and doctors. Uh, there was a study of hospice nurses and social workers which indicated that a strong palliative care benefit from, from having an aid and dying prescription on hand. A third of the, the people in Oregon that get the prescription don't even end up using it, but it just gives them relief knowing that they have this option if their suffering becomes unbearable. Um, medical aid in dying also um, promotes higher hospice use. Uh, in 2014, a study was done, and in and and you know generally hospice use is embraced as an indicator of quality of end of life. And 50, I think it was 53, 53 percent of the people in hospice care um, in Oregon. I mean, hospital use in Oregon was higher than the national average, which was 46%. So, you know, there, there certainly are indicators that this has been very beneficial to people. Um, and when I talk with people all the time, I hear just knowing that you have that option, you know, and your suffering doesn't, suffering doesn't become unbearable is, is something that, you know, brings peace of mind for people at the end of life. Thank you, Ms. Manis. Appreciate just it. One more question. Please. So, We've heard the word euthanasia thrown around tonight. Could, so tell me the difference between what, we're, what you're proposing and what's been described. Sure. Um, I will address euthanasia and also like to address the, the word suicide. Um, you know, people who commit suicide are typically not <clears throat> people who are terminally ill. They are depressed and they use a violent, generally a violent means to end their lives. People who request medical aid in dying are people that want to live. I mean, they're dying from their disease and all they want is the option to have a peaceful ending. Uh, as far as euthanasia, euthanasia is someone, whether a doctor or a medical professional, 
doing it to you, you know, administering the drug to, to end your life. A medical aid in dying puts it all in your own hands. You know, you have that option. And, um, the, the, and euthanasia is illegal in the United States, so it's not even applicable to this bill in Rhode Island or any other bill that, that we've introduced. Thank you. Thank you.